Welcome to the series premiere of Cyber Crimes, Dangers and Defenses. I'm Eric Bellardo, and I'm a 30-year veteran of uh, security and cybersecurity. And with me is my co-host, Carmen. Hi, I'm Carmen Ray, and I have a degree in criminal justice with a focus on um, cyber crime. And I'm a little bit of a true crime addict, so, so I'm excited about this. Hey. So each week we will be showing you guys a new case and we're going to dissect that case and discuss the dangers as well as how to defend yourself against this type of cyber crime. Um, and starting next week, we're going to have um, a guest. Um, we'll have a guest every week, hopefully. And um, also if anyone has ever been a victim of cyber crimes, um, whether it was harassment or um, cyber stalking, please let us know. We will put our contact information at the end of the video, um, but definitely contact us. We might use you in a featured video later on. Oh, wonderful. So today's case is all about how a young man's infatuation became a nightmare for the person and her family. This episode is called Rejection. This program describes the actions of a real live case. Not all outcomes are known or final. All suspects are presumed innocent unless proven guilty in a court of law. Throughout this series, we will not be using the victims' names out of respect for the sensitive nature of these crimes against them. We will always refer to the victims as Jane or John Doe unless they say we can use their names or want their stories told. Desmond Bablu Singh, age 19, and Jane Doe's sister were classmates at the same school in 2019. Through the sister, Singh met Jane Doe. It is unclear whether they had ever physically met each other or if they only knew each other through common social media contacts. A year later, in February 2020, Singh sent Doe an Instagram story professing his love for her. Doe responded by saying she was not interested in him and told Singh not to contact her again. This rejection angered Singh, and from April 2020 through November 2020, he used more than 100 social media accounts, electronic communications, and phones to send Doe harassing messages. These messages included threats of bodily injury, sexualized violent content, racial slurs, and death threats. Singh hacked Doe's accounts, changed her passwords to lock her out of them, and used her accounts to post offensive images and content without authorization. Singh went on to obtain personal images that Doe had privately stored on her Snapchat account and posted them on social media. He used these images to harass Doe, her family, and her ex-boyfriend, who he felt was still a threat to him and a reason why he could not have her. After all of this occurred, Doe went to the courthouse and obtained a restraining order against Singh. But when the court tried to serve the order, Singh could not be located. A couple weeks later, Singh emailed a bomb threat to the Baltimore County Police Department, signing the email from Jane Doe. This caused a SWAT team and canine response to Doe's home, where they quickly realized it had been a hoax and that the email had been sent by Doe's harasser. Singh then started to solicit men on Telegram Messenger. He was actively seeking someone who would rape, murder, and decapitate Doe in exchange for payment in Bitcoin. Singh was finally tracked down and arrested in New York City in December 2020. Singh was then extradited back to Baltimore, where he was federally charged. The federal charges included cyber stalking, causing intentional damage to a protected computer, aggravated identity theft, emailing a hoax bomb threat, and murder for hire. If convicted, Singh could receive 10 years in federal prison. As of December 2020, Desmond Bablu Singh's case is still pending. Okay. 
Okay, so now we're going to break this case down and discuss the dangers that were presented and find out what we can do to protect ourselves. <clears throat> um, the first danger was she was hacked. Can you see? <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm new to this and he's the technical guy and I just want to make sure that we're... can't see us. There we go. We're back. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. So we're going to break the case down, like I said, and discuss the dangers. And he's going to let us know what we can do to protect ourselves. Right. So in this case, um, we had um, this man, uh, Singh, was his last name. Um, his first, the first danger was that he hacked her accounts. He penetrated her social media. He got into all of her accounts. He, he basically... Um, emailed, you know, emailed friends, text messages, photos to all of her family and friends. So what can you do to protect yourself from being hacked? Well, there's many ways to doing this. And the first one that I always tell anybody is protect your accounts. You know, use complex passwords. Use passwords that are more than the eight characters with an alphanumeric number. You know, use passwords like... Uh, love for my cat fluffy and put numbers in there um so use really really hard passwords to guess um, the second part is most social media um, providers have the um, uh, the ability to do two-factor authentication that's the putting the um the text messages so that you can receive a code every time you're logging in. What that does is if anybody were to get your password, they still have to get that second factor to log in. So it makes it doubly hard. Um, the other thing that we can do is protect your devices. Don't leave your cell phone or your computer unlocked or, or sitting at the table where somebody can steal it and use it for that. And the last thing that I will tell you is be careful. Be careful with opening emails, opening text messages, clicking links on those because those are methods for a nefarious person to go ahead and, um, you know, um, inject malicious code into your computer so they can come in regardless. They can even do that on like Twitter through a direct message or something, right? Or is it a little harder? It's a little harder to do that directly on the social media but um but it's it's um it's usually through text messages and emails that you do that that's vishing and phishing okay sounds good um that two factor uh, what do you call it the authentic uh, authentication thank you um uh, it's a pain in the butt but it is worth it they they made me do that on all of my social media and i'll tell you it's yeah. every time i go to log in i have to get my phone and click 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 but it is worth it because it keeps us safe okay so um after all of this happened he he had gone into her snapchat took all her photos um basically sent them to everybody that he, you know he knew she knew and um after that she did the right thing she went and got a restraining order um now law enforcement couldn't find him so that was kind of the danger they had the the restraining order but when they went to look for him they couldn't find him so how i know there's no way to really protect yourself from that but what does getting the restraining order do to help her well you know, what I'm going to say might not be politically correct in all all different areas, but a, criminals don't follow the law <laughs> or don't respect the law. True. Um, so it is a great tool for police and prosecution to use here in the United States and in different countries that use the restraining order. Um, but um, 
what I tell everybody is don't rely on that paper. That criminal is not going to do something. It is a great tool for a police officer to come if that person's in your vicinity and being able to escort them out or something of that nature. That's not going to keep the person from doing. In this particular case, um, even though she got a restraining order, they couldn't serve him. Right. So that contributed to, you know, when he, if he does come close to her, then the police would have to serve him at that time and then remove him. And something we talked about um, a couple of days ago when we were going through this, and I thought it was interesting. So the restraining order um, is different, the same as if you were, I guess, if someone was physically stalking you or physically harassing you, you would get a restraining order and that would keep them a certain amount of feet away from where you are. But I guess the restraining order for social media and you know electronic communication is a little different so restraining orders are given for a specific purpose um physical harm connection connectivity and things of that nature um again this is not to be used as any legal advice but i you know in general what we're talking about here is she got an, a restraining order both physical and contact Okay. Um, based on what we know of the case. Yeah. So with that, he wasn't allowed to contact her. He wasn't allowed to to be within, a, within some proximity. Okay. So it depends when you go to the court, if you are the victim of, of, a, of this type of uh, malice, um, make sure that it does include the no contact and no, no physical presence as well. Because that's really going to help her later on down the road if Correct. he gets charged or arrested. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, this is a guy that that created over 100 accounts. That still baffles my mind. I don't, I, I can't, I can't keep track of yeah. one email and, and Twitter, but you know, a <laughs> hundred, I mean, how do, how, I, not, we don't want to know how he did it, but, um, <laughs> But I mean, you know, the, the guy obviously isn't going to care about a restraining order. No, I mean, correct. That's just correct. how I see it. If you have a hundred things, you want her. Okay. Um, let's see. The next thing he did, he went above and beyond and he sent a bomb threat. He typed it out, sent the email to the Baltimore Police Department, and then a SWAT team and canine unit showed up at her home. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. you can't protect yourself from that either, but what can you do? Well, swatting is, let's first describe what swatting is for people who don't know that, is sending a message to lo local law enforcement um, that is of a very critical nature so that they send out, you know, special specialized weapons and tactics. That's what SWAT stands for. Um, but they send that team out to investigate and usually it's a bomb threat a terroristic threat or something of that nature to that will you know bring out the big guns as they say and that's okay. called swatting and that's called when swatting that, okay so i want to talk about that a little bit because this it happens a lot in the social media community in the streaming community in the creator community uh, mostly in the gaming community, gaming community. Yeah. Um, in you know live streaming and things of that nature um, it is it happens for good or bad it happens and you know there's been some cases where swatting has you know in 90 percent of the cases 95 percent of the cases it gets resolved very easily. Somebody comes in, they look, there's no bombs, there's no this, there's no that. And at that point in time, the police say, sorry, we're leaving. Okay. And then there's been some other cases where people have not been cooperative with the police. And we just read about a case, I believe in Ohio, where father confronted the police and got shot. Um, so what I tell everybody is if you're ever Hopefully you're not, but if you're ever swatted, make sure that you comply with the police. Make sure that you show your hands, that you follow the instructions, that you let them know, you know, there's no threat here. And that's the main main thing. Follow the rules, follow their commands. No confrontation. No confrontation. Not the time for it. Not the time for it. You can 
do whatever you want later on. But for that particular purpose, for that particular time, just follow the instructions. Okay, okay. that's great advice because I certainly wouldn't know what to do if SWAT team came through my front door. Okay, so the next thing he did, which another very disturbing piece of this case, he solicited people on Telegram Messenger to rape, decapitate, and murder her in exchange for Bitcoin. So she did do something. We, we don't know how she found out this information, but she was the one, Jane Doe, um, was the one who found out that he was doing this. We don't know if someone told her or if she found it on her own. So she was being very vigilant by getting this information and passed it on to the police. And then they verified that, yes, he did do this. So um, again, uh, you know, how do you protect yourself from, from something like that? Well, one of the things that I tell everybody is if you're ever in this type of situation, make sure that you remain vigilant, that you you know, seek out, uh, do searches on Google, do searches on different social media for your name, for, you know, for, for that particular person, if it's known what, what the stalker or the, or the, or the threat actor, as we say, um, make sure that you keep looking to see if there's any evidence out there that could be that could be used. Yeah. Okay? Be your own cyber suit. Be your own Sl cyber. cyber. I said Correct. fiber. Yeah, you said cyber. Cyber sleuth. Mm. Okay. <laughs> All right. And so keep keep looking. Make sure that you re that you know number one, you save every piece of information. Make sure you save any texts, any emails, anything that you have as it can be compromising, it could be malicious, it could be fictitious, it could be anything. Save that because that is a treasure trove for an investigator or a prosecutor um, to help you once the case is over and somebody's uh, apprehended. Something so. that's really important to remember and, you know, being harassed, having your name spread out there in a bad way you know someone has compromising pictures of you that are embarrassing you know you need to contact your friends and family and let them know that, is that this happened yes it's embarrassing yes you don't want them to see these things but nine times out of ten they probably already have so it's best to go to them and say please you know as as much as you want to go and delete it all because it's embarrassing and you don't want to see yourself or Correct. you don't want to read don't have your friends and family keep it because of what he just said, yeah. because for prosecution, because if he gets arrested, you will have this as your, what do you call it? Yeah, my, your, my your treasure trove, Thank your you. into investigative treasure trove. <laughs> and actually, let me do a shout out to one of our viewers right now, SE CyberSafe um, is a channel um, that is, um, I believe in Nigeria, correct? and uh say hello on the chats and he just did a live stream on friday on sextortion oh wow so if you want it's se cyber cyber safe and uh check out his channel and he did a great job talking about cyber uh sextortion so great so great, great. okay okay um so uh, when we upload the uh, well when we upload the um edited video we'll make sure we have all the resources we'll have some information things that we've talked about tonight um in there so that you have some something to to look back on if you ever need help with anything all right sounds good so now um we are going to go to our question and answer session of our program here um normally um, before we get to the question and answer session, um, in our program, we'll have a, a guest, mm -hmm. um, that will join us during these, uh, live streams. And, uh, then we'll discuss these cases with them, uh, psych psychologist, psychiatrist, or somebody in the law enforcement field that can help us and guide us through this. But being that this is our premiere today, we wanted to, you know, just go straight to the point. Um, so if anybody has any questions, please put them in the uh, chat. Um, we did receive some questions prior, but um, if there's anybody there that has any questions, shoot them, shoot them our way. 
Do you want to answer one while we while we wait and see if anybody asks? Yeah, let's go ahead. Okay. Um, one question we got, um, and actually I've heard this at this has been asked a lot. Uh, why is it so hard to get law enforcement involved in cyber cases? It's almost like they don't believe you or they just brush it off. Oh my god. Um so <laughs> so yeah. um for those of you that don't know me, I've been investigating, um, doing cyber forensics and investigating cases for you know, a long, long time. time, 20, 20 some years. Um, one of the most, or one of the things that I hear the most from, uh, victims, um, or people that get, get threatened or get, you know, stalked or anything like that, um, is I reported this to the police, to the local police and, they took a report, but they didn't do anything. And the reason for that is local law enforcement lacks the training to be able to um, respond to um, cyber incidents, uh, you know, um, cyber harassment, bullying harassment. They're getting better. Um, and I'm not going to say all... So all the police departments are, but because of lack of education, lack of funding, um, in different areas, they, um, you know, they don't, they don't respond very well. They might have one or two people in, you know, city in the city department that knows about it. And I and, think states are getting better as well. State police are, yes. have their cyber crime. So, so state police, all state police have a cyber crime lab now. But in order to get to that point, there are things that need to be met, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, need to be prosecuted or need to have uh, some 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 guidelines to get to that point. But do not forget, there is your local FBI uh, agency. They do have a cyber crimes um, tip line, and we'll put that in the resources below. Um, and in different countries, it's different. I'm just talking about the U.S. here. But in different countries, there is different cyber squads that att attend to these things. Some are better than others. Um, but in general, there's a lack of education in law enforcement at the local level to be able to handle the mass. Yeah. Um, I mean, there was uh, I was talking to a friend of ours um, a psychologist in, um, in Canada. And he told me that, you know, a, approximately in, in North America, um, approximately 60% of the people out there have experienced some bullying mm -hmm. or harassment online. So this is a, you know, it can be something small, like a Twitter feud or something like that, which we get into a bunch of times. Um, but but a but some are are a lot more intense if you will mm -hmm. okay next question okay actually we answered the next question um a while back okay. are stalking laws the same in person as they are for are bleh. are stalking laws the same in person as they are for cyber stalking which we already kind of yeah. went through that. so no and and those are dependent on currently on different states. Mm -hmm. So different states, different countries, different jurisdictions have different physical stalking laws mm -hmm. or harassment laws. And in some states, there are no cyber stalking laws or cyber harassment laws or things of that nature. Um, and that's really one of the reasons why we're doing this. Yeah because we feel that there really needs to be more consistency in the laws um, across the U.S. and and all over, really. Yeah. Okay. Correct. All right. The la no questions on the thing? No, nope, not yet. Okay. So the last question I have is, why are you calling the victims Jane Doe? Isn't it better not to draw more attention to the bad guy and focus on the victim? Well, I guess I can answer this yeah, one. Yeah, why don't you go ahead? Because <laughs> that was my idea. Um, in these cases, first of all, they're very sensitive in nature. Um, someone's been harassed. They, you know, their pictures are all over. Maybe, you know, we, we don't know they're different cyber crimes, you know, but thinking in terms of stalking and harassment here, um, I just feel because it's very sensitive, 
I don't want to use a victim's name um, just to keep their privacy and not have them have to go through any more pain and suffering that they already have. Um, of course, if someone reaches out to us who, you know, wants their story to be told, then, you know, we, we will use the name. But for this, for what we're doing here, because it's educational, um, we're just going to use Jane or John Doe. Um, as far as using the, um, the perpetrator's name, his name's out there. I mean, it's public knowledge. You, you know, you can, you can Google his name and his case will come up. So I don't feel like we're, um, keeping, you know, yeah. so that's it. Okay. All right. All right. With that, we're going to close. Oh, wait, we just got a question. Stand by. Okay. What if you notice you are being impersonated by a scam artist on ah. different social media platforms? How can you handle it knowing that it tarnishes your image everywhere on socials? That happens a lot. Happens a lot. Oh, well, whew, that's a good question. Thank you. Um, so there's various ways of doing that. Um, there is... Number one is you can contact and report that person in Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or any of those social media, and you report that that person or that account to them. Um, it's not easy. I'm not going to say it's easy, and it's just a one-click thing. Um, if you see it on a website, if you see it on, on some other um, domain out there, um, there are takedown laws. Um, you go to that website, you see the webmaster, and you request a takedown is what it's called. That's actually the That's wording. That's if it's on a website, That's correct? if it's on a website. It, you can also um, request that to Facebook and Google in their you know, abuse. Uh, most of them have an abuse email. So don't just report something via the reporting thing. On, twi on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, or any other social media, you know, they have that click to report or click to report spam or click to report an account, but then also fo forward that with a email to their safety or security emails, to their abuse emails, and uh, those are normally located in the help side or in the footer of a, uh, of a website. Uh, of all websites. So look for that and uh, try to try to do that. Now, what if you are on Twitter, or I'm just going to use Twitter as an example, because that's mm -hmm. what I'm used the most, um, and somebody's impersonating you and spreading bad stuff. If, if Twitter takes that down, I mean, you can report it and they're going to take it down. The person's just going to go and create another account. And that's a problem. And so, I mean, how do you... And how do you save that and keep track of that? Well, like screenshot. I said, it's, vi it's vigilance. Yeah, well, you screenshot anybody who's saying anything negative about you on social media. I already mentioned that. Mm -hmm. Please make sure you keep a track of everything that's going on there. But the one important thing is that, you know, we can't do very much about is the concept of, you know, if... You know, perpetrator is going to do something. They're going to do, let's just say they're going to impersonate me and they do Eric one, you know, and impersonate me and we successfully take that down. Then they'll create an Eric two or mm -hmm. an Eric tree. And, and an I Eric see four. it all the time. And that happens. You see that a lot with celebrities. And There's a lot see, of fake yep. celebrity accounts out there. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. So with that in mind, you just have to be vigilant. You have to be vigilant about what's going on. Um, there are ways of taking those down and to keep, vi but you have to keep vigilant. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are systems out there that you can, you know, there's there's companies out there that monitor your accounts, that monitor your reputation, that monitor your, you know, your your online presence. Yeah, they cost a little bit of money, but it gives you a little bit of a, a peace of mind. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And um, just make sure that with those type of companies and those types of people that are out there monitoring your accounts and stuff like that, there are a lot of scam companies out there. 
There's a lot of them scams out there. Scams everywhere. There's scams out there. So make sure it's a reputable company. Make sure it's a, you know, company that's been doing this that is, you know, a big name or something of that nature. So that's uh, thank you very much for that. Okay? Okay. All righty. Well, with that, we are going to move over to maybe oh, our final what? thoughts. Final our thoughts. Our final thoughts. Okay. So just wanted to bring this up. One of the things or one of the reasons that we're doing this new series um, is number one, to make people aware of not only the dangers that are that you're exposing yourself by being in social media, online, and things of that nature. Um, but also we want to be able to use this platform to advocate for stronger laws to move beyond this this platform and start talking to our representatives or, gov or governance um, uh, uh, you know authorities so that we can have some more consistent laws uh, that's kind of a mission that we've had for a so very long mission. time yeah. and the other part is training for you know local and state and federal agencies so that they can assist in this enforcement. It's a huge challenge that there's, you know, a, a patchwork of laws that they haven't caught up with the technologies and that needs to change. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely needs to change. All right, well, we wanna thank you for joining us and we will be back here next week at seven o'clock, same time. We will have a guest, we'll have a new case and we'll be here. All right. And if you like this format, please comment and let us know. Send us your questions in advance. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel so you can be notified when we do all our uploads and when we go live. Yeah. And until next time, I want you to practice safe cyber. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs>